Hi, my name is Rebecca Myrick and I'm a traffic engineer. I'm also registered as a professional engineer and a professional traffic operations engineer. And today I'd like to explain to you a bit about traffic operations analysis. You may have seen traffic studies or presentations at public meetings, and I want to explain a bit about those analyses, how they're performed, and what the results mean. There's two basic types of analyses that we perform, static analyses and dynamic analyses. Of, among static analyses, there's two different types that we do um, using critical lane analysis and using the highway capacity manual, which those analyses are typically performed using synchro software. The critical lane analyses are the simplest analyses. They only incorporate the lane configurations and the peak hour volumes for the intersection. They help us, help us get an idea of where the high volume movements are, what the capacity of the intersection is, where there may be available capacity along different approaches. Uh, the synchro analyses also incorporate the signal timings at the intersection, so they allow a more detailed analysis, help identify extra delay created by uh, dead time during the signal where one approach may have a green but nobody's going and the other approach has a red and there are vehicles waiting to go. Um, both sets of analyses are very preliminary planning level analyses. They are very quick to perform and provide a quick view of how traffic is operating and an easy tool to identify potential improvements. They do not incorporate the effects of one intersection on another intersection. They don't take into account the effects of queues spilling beyond storage lengths or uh, people being unable to access turn lanes due to being stuck in a through queue. So they're, they're very preliminary, but they are a very useful tool for um, just a general idea of capacity if everything in the system was working well around this intersection. So if we want to go to the next level and perform more detailed analyses, we use the dynamic analysis, which is also considered um, simulation analyses. These are performed using sim traffic, which is a tool that coordinates with synchro or vSIM. Now vSIM is a much more sophisticated tool. It requires a lot of detailed input and it's very useful if you want to evaluate freeways or interchanges. But for arterial corridors, for unsignalized and signalized intersections, we typically use synchro and sim traffic. So we input all the data into synchro and then sim traffic runs the models. Now these tools incorporate the lane configurations, peak hour volumes, and signal timings. They also include consideration of storage lengths for, for the turn lanes, distance between intersections, travel speeds, driver behaviors, and the effects of queues at one intersection on operations at other intersections in the system. These analyses provide much more detailed information and allow us to refine the improvement alternatives. The primary output that we consider from these uh, analysis tools is level of service. Level of service is considered in, uh, from A to F. It's grades just like in school. A through C are considered to be generally pretty good. The traffic is relatively free flow. There may be some minor stops and delays here and there, but it's, the delays are minimal and it's pretty free flowing. When you get into level of service D territory, you start to have more delays. You're sitting a little longer at intersections. Um, people may have to take slightly smaller gaps to get out of driveways, which requires traffic to slow to accommodate them. But overall, it's still working pretty well. Um, you're able to get where you need to go in a reasonable amount of time. Under level service E and F, the um, intersection is, is approaching or at failing conditions. It's at capacity. So that's when you get long queues. It's when you're under condition where you may be sitting at a green light, but you can't go because there's queues in front of you. Um, that's when the system really starts to break down. So when we're analyzing intersections, um, for unsignalized intersections, we have to look at every approach because these vehicles are not guaranteed a chance to go. So we need to know how much delay is occurring along each approach. So the main line, odds are, is pretty free flow unless it's having issues due to nearby intersections. But lefts off of the main line and any turn movements off of the side streets may be delayed. So we need to look at the level of service and the delay for all of the approaches at those intersections. If the delays at unsignalized intersections are getting very high, then that's something that needs to be addressed. For signalized intersections, though, because everybody is guaranteed to get a green eventually, we 
more consider the overall level of service for the, the intersection as a whole and don't look so much as the level of service for individual approaches or individual movements. Um, part of the reason is, you know, if you, if you go into detail and really look closely at how the level of service and delay are assessed, level of service is considered to be F for any average delay over 55 seconds. Now for a corridor where you have a distinct main line where the volumes along the main line are much heavier than on the side streets and a pretty minor volume on the side streets. And when we're under congested conditions, the signal cycle lengths at this location are going to be anywhere from 120, 150, 180 seconds to accommodate this extra traffic. And the cycle lengths go up as congestion builds because during every signal cycle phase, you have a green, a yellow, and then a red. And during the yellow and red, nobody's really going, it's kind of dead time. So the more times you repeat the yellow and red during an hour, the less, the fewer vehicles are able to go. So if we can extend the overall cycle length, extend the green times, then more vehicles get to proceed. The downside is that anybody sitting at a red light is sitting for longer periods, waiting for their chance to go. And as a result, you know, just by default, if you have a cycle length that long, I mean, 180 seconds is three minutes. So if you're sitting on a side street and you're waiting for a green, you're going to be sitting for at least two, two and a half minutes, which is well into level of service F territory based on the, the specific guidelines. But if we were to reduce your delay so that everybody was able to go in, in less than 60 seconds of delay, then the overall system wouldn't have enough capacity to handle everything. So in order to accommodate the overall system, the individual side streets need to wait. And as long as they wait for one cycle length, they get to go during the first screen that they get, we're generally pretty happy with that. In a congested condition, if all of the approach is clear during their green, we are very, very happy. If the approaches, the minor approaches don't have to go, get to go during their first green, they have to wait for a second or third green maybe, then that's a concern and that's something that needs to be addressed. But no matter how long they're waiting, as long as they get to go during the first green, we're pretty happy with that as traffic engineers trying to manage the system. So that's sort of the basic summary of traffic operations analysis and what we're looking for. And I hope that um, provides a little more detailed information that might help you understand the results there in some of these other reports.